a critical control point is oftentimes referred to as a CCP, another one of those fantastic acronyms in the alphabet soup that is the food safety world. A CCP is a point within your process that you have identified as being essential for controlling a known or reasonably foreseeable significant hazard. Typically, we say that CCPs serve one of three functions or one of three actions that they can take. So a CCP is typically going to prevent a hazard from entering your product stream or eliminate that hazard from the food itself, or it is going to reduce that hazard to an acceptable level. If you have questions about acceptable levels, there is the defect action level handbook from the FDA, which is going to tell you what those limits are for these specified significant hazards. So for every CCP that you identify, HACCP tells us those CCPs must have identified critical limits. Those critical limits may be a time, a temperature, or a combination of factors, but we do say that critical limits are absolutes. They're not opinions, they're not guidance, they are a maximum or minimum measurable value. Well, so one example of a CCP, particularly in the tree nut industry, particularly almonds, is pasteurization. If we think about pasteurization, it is the application of heat to some degree, or maybe steam, there are different ways to pasteurize. We can also utilize PPO. So regardless of how you are pasteurizing, you're going to need to identify the critical limits for that critical control point. So your critical limits might be the combination of time and temperature. If we think about your product flowing through a pasteurizing tunnel, you also have to take into account the bed depth of your belt or the area where your product is laying and being moved through. Because if we have a deep bed, we have the potential for piling of product. If we have that piled up product, we're not going to have an uh, even application of that time and temperature, which means we cannot guarantee the safety of every single one of those tree nuts. One example of a critical control point is a metal detector. Keep in mind, you may have multiple metal detectors in your facility or on a singular line. So if we think back to that definition of a CCP, we said that a critical control point is essential for managing a significant hazard. That management technique could be the prevention, the elimination, or the reduction to an acceptable level. So if we think about metal detectors, we know that they are going to detect and reject specific types and sizes of metal. So that's the removal process. So we're eliminating a physical hazard from our food, our product, or our process. When it comes to that metal detector, the critical limit is very simple. It is functionality. So that functionality simply means, is that machine able to be turned on and serve its purpose? Is it able to detect and reject the types and sizes of metal that it has been calibrated for? For every critical control point we have, we know that we must identify a critical limit. Typically, those critical limits are maximum or minimum values if they are able to be quantified. If it's not a maximum or a minimum value, it may be a parameter, such as, is my metal detector on and functioning? Does it have the ability to detect and reject the specific types and sizes of metals that it has been calibrated for? If we think about what the FDA is expecting of us in our food facilities, we know the FDA is expecting us to show due diligence. The way we do that is through our paperwork, our record keeping, which means for every critical control point we have, we are going to have to monitor the critical limits for that CCP. So if we think about monitoring, we can think about that as the base of our pyramid. Monitoring is going to be what we do most often or most frequently in a facility. That, what, that is what we may have employees on the line for. Oftentimes, this is referred to as checks. So when you're referring to your checks of your metal detector 
or your checks of your pasteurizer. That's actually the activity of monitoring. So when we are monitoring, we're looking at small amounts of data over multiple points within the day. Once that monitoring is complete, we have to verify. That activity of verification is answering the question, did we follow the plan? So if you are a supervisor or a manager and you're reviewing those monitoring logs or check logs at the end of the day, what you're really doing is you are verifying. You're verifying that the employees were looking at the appropriate information at the appropriate time at the frequency that you have specified in your HACCP plan. Then at the top of our pyramid, if we look at validation, validation is what we do least frequently in a facility. Validation answers the question, were we successful? Did we achieve what we set out to achieve? And if we think about that goal, that goal really is to create a safe to consume product. So how do we prove that? Typically, that's going to be through our finished product testing. If we have identified through our hazard analysis that we have biological hazards, think of vegetative pathogens. If we specify those are significant, we then have to specify how we control them. That may be through a CCP, such as pasteurization. If we're going to test our finished product post-pasteurization, and we're having our certified laboratory test for vegetative pathogens, and we find that that sample is free of pathogens, we now have validated our process. Mm -hmm.